I think I followed you on Twitter mm. and Claude Williams was the name that just lingered in the atmosphere. Because like you'll be talking to someone they'll be like, oh yeah, I talked to Claude Williams. What the heck is that? <laughs> <laughs> There's so many big names out there that you would think are like wonderful people that you'd like to learn from. You don't know. <laughs> you don't know what's happening behind the scenes. I'll ask you this question. You could have been paid to do this, but you chose mentorship. Mm. Do you regret that decision? So for those that know, no, um, you're part of the Dream Nation team. Um, you've been doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes to help get us to where we are now. Um, normally on these episodes, in between interviews, people used to see in Abby Soye, who was um, back in her, her hiding place behind the camera. Um, but today I wanted to have a bit of a different conversation with you guys because in addition to being team members, we do also do a bit of mentorship. But before we jump into that, it would be great for people to hear a little bit from you. So could you give a quick introduction? The way you put it. <laughs> <laughs> you come on. <laughs> um, for context, I'm a filmmaker, um, and within the Dream Nation team, I creative direct and direct um, the advertising side of things. My role kind of changes here and there. So now we're kind of get going into content strategy, which is super exciting. But yeah, nice. Uh, what is my role on the Dream Nation podcast? <laughs> uh, behind the dreams, I, I guess, creative consulting. Pretty much, yeah. pretty much, yeah. Pretty much community building, kind of talking about like, how do we make this impactful, grow it? Um, I talk to Claude often, <laughs> basically, <laughs> and we talk about all things from mentorship to kind of where we're taking this and the Dream Nation community. So yeah, that's what I do. Excellent. So, not sure if those are the clearest uh, no, not descriptions. Clear, not clear, but <laughs> not clear. I mean, it'll have to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, rather than just like you guys bombarding me with questions or me bombarding you with questions, what we did do is we put out on Instagram on each of our personal channels. And if you don't follow us on Instagram, um, each of, I think we will try and put our names and profiles and stuff on screen right now. So, but we put this out we got a bunch of questions in um i'm gonna say 99.9 percent .9 came from courtney's digital sisterhood at, T <laughs> at tms so shout, out the <laughs> so shout out to you guys for coming yeah. through on that one um but we do have a list of questions to go through um i was told i should go with courtney first yes but are you going to no uh, <laughs> sorry <Steph. Why? laughs> <laughs> so Steph, I'll let you let you pick the first question. Okay, cool. Um, the first question is: How did you know that he was the mentor that you needed? Um, that is a deep question. One, um, how did I know Claude was the? Me I knew Claude before he became my mentor. I can't remember how I met you, Claude. University. Was it at, at my uni? Yeah, then? yeah, I'm pretty sure. Are you sure? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely knew Claude because he went to my university um, and he was an alumni. And at the time, um, this was when Dream Nation did like lots of events and stuff. So I went during uni and like, yeah, I loved the whole Dream Nation movement um, and stuff like that. So I feel like I bumped into you some point during then. Um, I think... The, the company and what you were doing at the time really just aligned with what was important to me and like yeah in terms of just like dreaming big I've always been a bit of a dreamer um but the practical side was something that I didn't really have as much of like strength in and I just remember just I don't know how I initially met you but I think we just kept like bumping into each other at events or at like any dream nation stuff that we did um or you did and I um, just thought, this guy is so smart. <laughs> every every um, conversation that we had just felt super um, valuable in some way. And I, I, I just thought that 
you're just someone that I wanted to have around <laughs> if that <laughs> makes sense um and yeah at the time it was it started off quite in, informally in that like sometimes I would just have questions and you were kind enough to kind of um share your insights on stuff and at the time I was working on a social enterprise as well so the fact that Dream Nation was a social enterprise kind of there was a lot to learn from you um and then over time we just kind of kept that relationship going um and now it's kind of a more kind of formalized mentorship yeah. um but yeah that is i hope i answered the question uh, i think i lied as well <laughs> it was the what was then the powerless foundation and the letter then now the letter foundation yes. so you did go to my uni but that i actually met you through that charity through that. yeah there we go there yeah. great stuff <laughs> should i answer as well i think so how did i know that you're meant to be my mentor so funnily enough i think we met through the internet I have a very strong feeling <laughs> we met through the internet. I think I followed you on Twitter mm. and Claude Williams was the name that just lingered in the atmosphere. Cause like you'll be talking to someone that'll be like, oh yeah, I still to Claude Williams. Who the heck is that? <laughs> <laughs> so I followed you on Twitter and you're building Dream Nation. Um, and I think a, like someone on your team then reached out to me to cover some social media for a Dream Nation gala. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. I want to be a part of this Claude Williams. Uh, bubble <laughs> um and I think I just stayed in your bubble I think we followed each other followed each other's journeys and I think there was a day where you came to Cambridge to speak at an event and you put on Twitter I'm going to be in Cambridge does anyone want does anyone want to meet for a coffee just to talk yeah and I was like yeah I do so I think I messaged you and you're like you're the only person who messaged me and we went to um I think Starbucks, Starbucks or yeah, and we yeah. sat down for like hours and we just spoke and spoke about like business my plans after university I got to know more about your journey and your story and you were just filled with so much knowledge that I left feeling really encouraged that like mm -hmm. my plans to dive into entrepreneurship post-university could actually work yeah. um and so I think in my mind then I was like oh, if I ever need anything I can go and like ask Claude because he just knows stuff you know? <laughs> he knows, <laughs> he knows stuff. <laughs> so yeah we stayed in each other's kind of like network and then you asked me to come on behind the dreams with Renee mm -hmm. and immediately like kind of sorting out the episode you called and we were like we actually haven't spoken in a really long time like since that day in Starbucks we haven't really caught up so let's arrange a catch up and um, as we were catching up after the podcast recording, it just like came in my heart that like I act at this stage in my life, I actually really need that Claude Williams guidance. <laughs> so we were just catching up and talking and you were, you had put on your story that you needed like, you wanted someone to talk to about growing and growth strategy of the Behind the Dreams podcast. And I had been working on like freelance projects around video growth strategy. So I was like, oh, well, I have something to offer you. And you have something I actually need. So in that conversation, I brought it up that like, I'm more than happy to consult on video growth and like community building in exchange for mentorship. And you're like, deal. And you've been stuck with me ever since. <laughs> yeah. And I think to add to that, Steph, your relationship is similar in terms of you do have a role here, but mm -hmm. then also the, the exchange for the role was mentorship in that yeah. regard. Um, it was, I think was a, quite an interesting deal that ended up happening in both cases yeah so i'll ask you this question you could have been paid to do this but you chose mentorship mm. do you regret that decision no absolutely <laughs> not i'll choose it again <laughs> um i think people can underestimate how valuable knowledge mm. can be and wisdom if you practice it mm. and that's yeah that is the precondition like if you don't put it into practice it won't mean anything but I think knowing that I'm in a stage in my life where I actually want to make real and tangible different um like difference in terms of growth and change like having wisdom like the right wisdom and knowledge can save you so much time and money and stress like so many of our conversations have, even though I always accuse you of shouting, Claude never <laughs> shouts, by the way. He never shouts, but I'm like, why are you shouting at me? So loud. <laughs> so loud, so, loud. so, so mean, so gentle. <laughs> but I can hear it ringing <laughs> in my ears. Um, but yeah, like I think the value of that, I can't, like, you can't, you can't really put a price on it. So yeah, I think if there was anyone that I, I need, like really needed like during this time, I think um, I'm really glad that that was the first, that was the, when you asked, oh, like what, 
And I go, what can you do? I was like, coach, coach me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you can do. So yeah, um, yeah. And I think what's interesting in both cases, because I don't take on mentees anymore and I just don't have the time for it. And I don't even take on coaching clients, even though people are asking, can I, co- can you, can I coach them willing to pay all of that? It's like, I don't have the time or energy. So it's interesting that you both have got something that literally money can't buy anymore. Um, so I'm glad that it seems to be worth it for you so far. Definitely is. Excellent. Courtney, did you have a, another I question? I do, I do. People want to know things. Um, okay. How often should I meet my mentor? Hmm. So in our case, for both, so I'm, I actually meet both of you weekly mm-hmm. as of right now, but we're doing it in alternating. So one week's mentoring, one week is um, actually like consulting or doing something for the company in that regard. So how are you finding that in your, in your frequency? Is every two weeks for mentoring session working or would you like more, would you like less? How, how's that going? It's definitely working for me. Mm-hmm. I think each session is so practical and so in depth that you leave with a lot to do, a lot to implement. And one thing you are going to do is hold someone accountable. Like <laughs> you're going to pull up, I don't know if it's a note sheet, a doc you have on each I, of us. I, I, I do, yeah. But we talk to go, hey, how are you? Good, okay. Like, what do you need help with? All right, cool. Then suddenly silence for about 30 seconds. So last time you said that you were going to... <laughs> God writes everything <laughs> down. No, yeah. everything so I think that accountability also lets you know, okay, after this session, I need to walk away and actually do something. Um, and I think two weeks is a good amount of time to actually put things in place, but also not let things run for too long i think Mm. monthly can sometimes feel like "Mm, you're not really going to be able to hold me accountable i'm just going to start rushing my tasks like a few days before i need to see you again whereas weekly can also feel like the week's gone by too quickly for me to even think about and process the session or um, what you told me to do so i think every two weeks has worked really well but i also think what's unique about our dynamic is because we have still have weekly meetings it's just one week is more focused on dream nation it's still a form of mentorship because we both learn so much about our craft and we grow as consultants as filmmakers as creatives like we grow so much working in this avenue um that that even though we're working on behind the dreams or dream nation stuff still feels a bit like a coaching Mm. kind of session but it's more like a I guess business coach coaching but yeah. I still grow as a person even in those sessions as well so yeah. I guess you could kind of say it's still weekly but the the alternating week or the dream nation week is more me strengthening my professional capacity more yeah. than my personal which I think is still really beneficial yeah I think what is unique about the way that I mentor is it ends up being a blend of mentorship and coaching yeah. so I don't know if for uh, most mentorship relationships a weekly or even bi-weekly type of cadence would work. It works for us because I take a lot of coaching principles and mm. implement it into, into the sessions as well. And to be honest with you, if we, wasn't, if we didn't have that business size, I definitely wouldn't have time to, to meet you on a bi-weekly basis. Mm. So for people at home thinking about how often should they meet their mentor, probably less frequently than we do um maybe once a month i think when i with some of my mentors i've had back in the day it was once every two months or once every quarter um and that worked for them because they were really busy people themselves quick question then go for it what is the difference between a mentor and a coach for anyone listening that's a great question so my, I know when I switch between mentorship and coaching, I used to mention it to you, like I'm being a mentor right now, now I'm being a coach. I don't think I do that as much now, but a coach is ultimately there to help you think something through. Um, the goal of a coach is ultimately asking you questions, helping you to understand something for yourself. At least the way that I was trained, and I know Steph, you've done the same coaching program that I did as well, is you go with the philosophy that the person you're speaking to has all the answers and it's your job to help them find it. Whereas when you're mentoring, you're being a lot more directive. You're speaking from your experiences and telling them essentially, this is what I did and this is how you get to this point. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the difference between coaching and mentoring. Um, And that's to throw that in there as well. Uh, Consulting is then actually given, tends to be like, given very specific advice within a like an area of expertise and therapy kind of on that spectrum as well 
tends to be more focused on um, helping you understand yourself. Um, oftentimes the way I kind of put therapy and coaching on the spectrum is therapy is often focused on your past and how that's impacting you today. Mm. Whereas coaching is focused on your future and how do we get you there? Mm. So I personally think having a blend of all four is how you get the best results. Nice. I hope you're enjoying today's episode. If you are, please make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube or whatever platform you're listening to this podcast on. Don't forget to like this video as well. Okay, um, this is a related question since we're kind of on the topic. Um, how do you know when it's time to call time on a mentor-mentee relationship? Oh, that's great. How do you know? How Well, how do you guys know? I don't know. <laughs> how do you I know? Because yes, so for those that aren't that don't know, Abby Soy is on the other side telling me that um, <laughs> I'm doing the interview thing right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to answer questions. How do I know that it's time to um, stop a mentor mentee relationship? As a mentor, I don't have to answer that yet because I haven't I haven't got to that point. Um, whereas as a mentee, I will say when it's that I have basically outgrown that mentor. Mm-hmm. So I have learned what I needed to learn from that person. Um, and I think the approach that I've taken to mentors throughout my life is that rather than having this person as my mentor and I'm going to get everything from them, I take the approach more of I have lots of different mentors that are mentoring me in very specific areas. So I've had a mentor that was teaching me about leadership because I saw that he was great with building a team. I've had another one that's taught me or was mentoring me more around like how to network more successfully because she had like a fantastic uh, community. Um, I've had mentors that are more focused on like my spiritual growth or focused on my development as like a man than those things, those type of areas. So with each mentorship relationship, I go into it with a, I guess, a really clear thing that I'm trying to learn. And then once I feel like I've learned all that I need to learn from that person in that regard, then then I, I think that's when the relationship comes to a natural end in that regard. I will also say that Mentors are humans and they have their limitations. So I've also learned to take their good of their bad and try to leave their bad side. And then once I've learned enough about the good, that's when it's time to move on. Mm. Um, And I'll say with all my mentors, I still will view them as mentors in the way that I look at them to this day. But in terms of like the frequency of meeting or things of that nature, like that's where it begins to, to die down. I have been with both of you, especially you, Courtney, trying to, stop the the mentorship side of things like multiple times but so far you guys are not letting me do that i don't know where um, you are getting <laughs> the idea of the inspiration to even try that so <laughs> i guess it's a <laughs> guess it's a quite a, like a meaningful question mm. when are we going to stop this when are you going to let me oh stop if you want you? to end things we <laughs> yeah. i won't let you go <laughs> 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 I'm <holding up> <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny oh. you know what I think that there is something very encouraging about hearing someone who's mentoring you being like I don't think you're going to need me for long or need me forever but I do think the process of like becoming a practical dream or building it's so evolutionary that mm. there are always new things you're trying to discover and learn and I think the stage and the experiences that you've had and the stage that you're at now, there is still so much to learn and gain from your knowledge that I'm like, no, I haven't, I haven't like extracted enough of what I need to prepare me for the future. Um, And I also think it wouldn't necessarily be like, well, it would be the end of like a mentor mentee relationship, but there would always be that friendship but also the friendship dynamic for me I think would always be from a position of learning like I know that even because this is like a reciprocal relationship there's a lot that I also give but I think with what you're trying to build and where I know you're evolving to I know that there are new dimensions of Claude which I'll still need to learn from and experience which may not have happened yet so the answer is never. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great justification. <laughs> <can't be. laughs> no, but it's true because if you're always on the journey of growth and then the person that you're learning from is on a journey yeah. of growth, it feels like there's, even though it might decrease over time how much you must like meet with them or whatever, um, there's always, I feel like there's always an element of value in like whatever learned experience. As long as we're human, we're always going to be learning, right? So, yeah. um, 
there's always value there. And I also think that in terms of, um, Courtney mentioned something about um, how it can shift towards like a friendship kind of relationship. Like um, they are human um, and you are human. So it's like, it's not like, oh, like this, this structure must mm. end. Like um, I've like with, I've got different kinds of mentors where the setup has been different. Some more formally, like through like programs or stuff like that, where it's like, oh, this is my mentor and this is the amount of time X, Y, and Z. And there's some that um, one day it was like, oh, I'm your mentor, by the way. <laughs> it was literally that. Um, but it means that a lot of the time, as time goes on, it just na- it's a natural shift in dynamic rather than an end. Yeah. Um, where it was like what in during this period it was formalized but whenever I need them I can still like get in contact and say this is the situation I'm dealing with and they're always happy to kind of advise so yeah I think it doesn't need to end it can just change and evolve yeah that's the same so one of my mentors who actually everybody knows she's my mentor if you want to come out and um we did have like quite a formal mentorship relationship at the beginning then it transitioned into actually reverse mentoring where I would actually help her understand young people a bit more um, when I was still classed as young. Um, <laughs> and now it is just a mother-son relationship. Like she's 100% just my mum. Even my actual biological mum, just is accepted that I just have two mums now. Um, and yeah, so we that change of that relationship means that when we talk, it's not really, I'm trying to teach her anything, she's trying to teach me anything or anything of that nature. She's literally just a friend or like I say, my mum and auntie, and it's one of the best things in my life. Yeah. Off the back of that, like I kind of see like some of my mentors as like older siblings or like, mm-hmm. like you said, like second parents to some extent, like not every mental relationship will evolve in that way, but mm-hmm. some of them do. And it is like beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to pretend to read a question from here because okay. um, this wasn't sent in, but one thing that I think is interesting is how do mentors actually pick their mentees? And why are we your why only two? <laughs> yeah. And That's I think, a good one, <laughs> why are you thank you. Your <laughs> so, apart from the fact that you obviously are both like adding a huge amount of value to my to my company, um, which is something that I think a lot of mentees forget, mm. is it should be a two way street. What can you offer the person that you're that is mentoring you? My criteria is also, am I going to be proud of these people? So, and I think this is true for most mentors. A lot of the reason why they take on this mentee is so they can say, when you're like killing it, successful, winning awards, whatever it is you go on to do, oh, that's my mentee, you know? (laughs) And I think it's almost that simple. Like, if you're going to be the type of person that is going to make the potential mentor proud, Mm -hmm. then that's one of the biggest criteria of, this is somebody that I want because I want to be associated with their future success. Mm. Um, and in both your cases, like you're both like killing it now. Yes, but there's so much more to come. And what I've seen you both do and even the things that I'm helping you think through and mentor you through, et cetera, right now, it's already outstanding. And like when I go to your, your film premiere um, in a few weeks, Steph, I'm going to be like, yeah, that's, that's my mentee. You know? <laughs> um, when Courtney won her award the other day, um, as she knows, I took particular pride in that. <laughs> Um, for, for, for a couple of reasons um, which, yes <laughs> um, but yeah like it's I'm just yeah I'm so proud of both of you um, and you make me look good by continuing to shine so that's one of the things that I use when I'm picking mentees so that's something that I think people need to also consider nice thank you so Courtney I feel like we did have a dilemma come through. We did. So if you're a part of a, the Two My Sisters community or you listen to the podcast, you know, we have a segment called Ding, 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 Dilemma. Ding, dilemma. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> but I literally am always getting dilemmas and somebody sent one in relevant to this. So I thought I'd ask you because you're the one who helps me fix my life. So, <laughs> hi, thanks for doing this. Here's my dilemma. So I'm fresh out of uni in my graduate job, but I'm not sure it's my purpose or calling from God. I do virtual styling on the side and I just feel there's more to my purpose for me than my nine to five job. I was doing Ikigai. It's a Japanese theory about finding your flow the other day and asked my friends, what's the one thing they would come to me for? And they all said they would come to me for life advice, finance advice, and I'm good at listening and giving unbiased advice. I've realized I love to learn and spread that wisdom. And it's made me think maybe God's calling for me could potentially be mentorship, but I'm not sure if I'm too young for it. 
When I think of a mentor, I tend to think of someone a bit older and more life experienced. I'm not making loads of money yet, but I'm just not sure if I'm qualified to go down this route. Would love to know your thoughts. Thanks in advance. Okay. Um, Fresh out of uni, I'm going to give the same advice that I, you guys have probably heard me say a million times, or even when I talk to younger people as a whole, something similar. You're legitimately too young to have life figured out. So, and that's, that's not like an insult or a curse. It's like, I think society puts such an unfair pressure on us when we are, what, 16 to pick your entire future and then 21 to have it all figured out and then 25 to be married and have kids and have your first house. It's like, those are all such silly and unrealistic expectations. Um, and then the advice I've given both of you as well is go get your money. Mm. Like you, that's having more fine access to finances having more income opens up so many doors i know steph probably like hates me for saying this all the time (laughs) 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 but um like it's fantastic that you are thinking about your life purpose and where you want to go and the gifts that you have and those are questions that you should continuously ask yourself but get your career under control So whether that's going to be entrepreneurship, whether that's going to be the corporate world, whatever it is in that regard, continue to grow in that area, in my opinion, and get to the point where you don't have to say not making a lot of money, change that to, yes, I'm doing that now. Um, And then with that, you'll have even more that you can give the world. Mm. So I guess to be specific in what I'm advising her on is you can mentor, but she is right, she is young. So therefore you realistically can only mentor people that are younger than you. Secondly, mentorship isn't a career. Um, mm. Like I know some people charge for mentorship, etc. I think there's, that's a little bit of a, an odd one, personally. Coaching, <laughs> yes, like that is a service that you're providing. Whereas mentorship, like I'm not too sure if that's something you can or should be charging. But on top of that, if you are going to mentor people younger than you, in her case, I'm, if she's coming out of uni, she's what, 21, 22? Yeah the people below you have even less money than you do. So that's not going to be a good career path for you right now. Um, I would say go out and do mentor and advise people, develop that skill set because it is a skill to be able to advise people well. I would say go and get a um, coaching qualification. Um, For those that are interested, there is a fantastic charity out there called Mo, um, M-O-E. Um, they offer a fantastic coaching course. I believe that's, I sent you both there. Yeah, I'm currently doing it. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Yeah. So, and <laughs> as you can both attest to that, it is a fantastic it course is, to do. It really is. And even if you don't want to become a coach, developing the skill set of coaching is game changing. So that's a great place to be as well. Um, but I would say beyond anything, focus on your career and become excellent at that. Mm. And through doing so, you'll be able to do so much more. And also remember your career and your purpose do not have to be the same thing. Mm. Like what you do to pay your bills is and doesn't have to be the thing that also fills your heart. Mm. If they happen to both coincide with each other, then fantastic. But the odds of you doing that in your 20s is about 5%. So if you make that your ambition, you're going to keep on finding that you're probably going to feel like you're failing. Whereas build your career, give yourself stability, do the things that you need to do with life develop the passion side of your life until you can make that your career one day but don't think about that until you're probably in your 30s that's good advice that's good advice i am a mentor i guess (laughs) 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 thank you for listening to today's episode if you haven't already make sure you sign up to our mailing list at dreamnation.co forward slash mailing list and from there you'll be able to find out about all the things that we have coming for you Um, The next question is, how should we approach someone we want as a mentor? I think if you're going to take it from our, the way we did it, it was approach them with value first. Like, this is actually what I can do for you. And this is what I want in exchange. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a very convincing proposition. Like, I actually have something you need. Um, And in exchange, I'm not going to take money, which is often the hindrance, I think, even for a lot of like really skilled entrepreneurs. It's like I'm building something. Resources can sometimes be limited. And so if you let them know, like, okay, I'll do this for something money can't buy your time right now. Mm. And it's like, oh, well, this is kind of a no brainer of a deal. And I think that's what we both put forth mm-hmm. it was a bit of a no-brainer so I would say like instead of going and being like you know out of the kindness of your heart can you do this in the real world people are busy people are building stuff and the people who you go to for mentorship it's usually because they're killing it 
and people who are killing it usually don't have time to sit down for two three hours a week to be like oh this is how you should fix your life so lead with value mm. is the one thing I would say yeah agreed um I would also say um and it this goes touches on what you mentioned early earlier around like you want someone that um you can be proud of I'd say just like be a good mentee in that like some mentors like I would say probably half of my mentors told me they were my mentor rather than me asking and I think I was like okay like any advice that they gave whether it be directly to me or things that I heard I kind of try to instill it in my life or like make sure I did like the work um and show that I'm actually learning from you a lot and I'm I'm teachable if that makes sense and I think that has been a I've found a good way to attract mentors but also keep them um they want to see that you're actually listening yeah. to what they're saying um and they want to know that you're actually evolving yes your journey might not be like linear but like they want to see that you're implementing um and in being intentional um so that they know that their time and their efforts is not wasted mm. um so yeah that's what i would say just to add to that i'll say two things yeah. warm the relationship up intentionally and what i mean by that is in both your cases, you didn't, it wasn't out of the blue, oh, can you buy a mentor? I had been connected with you online in different capacities or in your life, in your case, Steph. Um, so I had an idea and a sense of who you both were because I've there's a number of times when I've done a speaking engagement or release a new project and I get like out of the blue, someone's like, oh, drop, get drop that email. Can you be my mentor? I'm just like, I don't know who you are. Mm-hmm. Like legit, I don't yeah. know who you are. So having... And this is not even a shoe for mentorship. This is true of everything. If you want to yeah. if you start a business partnership, if you want to sell something to somebody, wherever it is, like having that warm relationship beforehand is going to be such a more valuable approach to take. Mm. And the other side, which is linked to this, is already be doing something. So if you say you want to start a business, at least have something up and going, even if it's just an Instagram page or an attempt of a website or your first event or whatever it is, like try to do something. Because I think when you're dealing with mentors of a certain level, we are very used to people just speaking Mm. because talk really is cheap, but we all can recognize when somebody is trying, they might not be succeeding yet, but they're trying and they, you can begin to see as a mentor that a little bit more insight for me might be the thing that will take them over the edge. Whereas if somebody hasn't started and it's just all talk, then yeah, you, like you don't have that time to waste. So yeah, that, those would be my two pieces of advice on that as well. That's good. Excellent. Agreed. I am going to go for a question this time. Okay. Go for all it. All right. So, um, so I feel like I need a mentor. How do I pick one or reach out to, reach out to one? Ooh. Funnily enough, your name had obviously everyone had been saying it but I remember I had a conversation with a friend just before graduating like a week before my graduation they were like hey what are you going to do post uni because I was one of those people who like I had declined my graduate job I'm going to run a business I'm going to do content creation I was broke (laughs) (laughs) they were like what are you actually going to do and I was like you know I'm having these ideas, like I want to build a hair company, I want to do like YouTube and content. And they were like, you could really do it. And I was just like, nah, I'm 21. Like being self-employed sounds really scary. And it sounds like something I can't do. And I always had this crazy ambitious uh, ambition that I didn't want to work for anyone. Like I didn't want a full-time nine to five or a corporate job. And they were like, do you know Claude Williams? And I was like, yes, I do. And they're like, he's done it. Like he's actually done it. Obviously you don't do it now because you're working on big boy roles. <laughs> Director and all of those things. But like up until that point you had been doing it where it was like you were working for yourself and you had just been working on projects that you were passionate about. And you weren't, you weren't tied to anything. Like you were just experimenting and developing skills along that journey. And that was very visible for anyone to see that you were just you were giving yourself as many opportunities to be and learn how to be a leader. And so when he brought up your name, I was like, okay. And throughout like the three years of running my business, that was the one thing that stuck with me that like, it's actually possible because Claude's done it. And at that time we weren't even speaking like, and I think when I knew I wanted, I I needed a mentor, you you came to mind because throughout 
my life, I guess you had been my virtual mentor, like in my head, this is someone who's actually done something I said I want to do. And so it's encouraging to just know that that person even exists. And so when the opportunity came, I think even when you called me like to prepare for the Behind the Dreams podcast, I was like, oh my gosh, Claude, I can't believe you're calling me. You're asking me to come on your podcast. Crazy. Because in my head, like you're Claude Williams, you know what I mean? And you still are. Um, it's just now that we actually have that in-person mentorship relationship. So I think in terms of approaching someone or knowing who to approach, who is the person you admire and who is the person you see yourself wanting to evolve into? You're going to bear fruit of spending so much time with this person. So do you want that to be the fruit of this, like of your life? Mm-hmm. And I think more than just what you've done, your character and who you are as a person yeah. is someone who I actually want to model my life after, like not just in a leadership capacity, but even like what you were saying, being able to shout so gently, like I'm like, I want to learn that <laughs> skill, you know, where you can push someone to actually do something, but they feel like it's with care and with actual love. And I think, when I thought about the character of someone I wanted to help guide me into the new seasons and dimensions of my life, it was just like you, you ticked all the boxes all around um, from what I could see. So I think letting them know that as well, like I admire this and this is what I want to draw from you and moving it forward from there. Yeah, I agree. I think um, looking at where you are weak and finding people that are strong in those areas um, really is kind of how my mentors kind of fit into my life and uh, like um I mentioned earlier like in terms of being super practical and like um a common thread in my mentors are that they're very like they're executors um and they're very good at like getting things done and bringing they dream big but they also act big (laughs) as well um and so like just realizing what, what your weaknesses are and how those people can help you and also I would just say in terms of picking mentors um going on what Courtney said about character like I think um there's so many big names out there that you would think are like wonderful people that you'd like to learn from you, you, you don't, you don't <laughs> know <laughs> you, you don't know what's happening behind <laughs> the scenes so I would say like really like try and like choose based on like the reality of a person if you get to meet them maybe go for a coffee before like even like try mm. and gauge whether you actually want to be mentored by this person and who they actually are because a lot of people can have a, a big back platform or can have a big name but they ain't they ain't who you should be learning yeah, from yeah. so um yeah i would say like go character first and try and like gauge who the person really is and if they have um the character traits that you desire and then go for it obviously we know that i am a mentor but it would be interesting to know if you guys currently mentor anyone else at the moment I don't currently like in a very formal sense. And I think that's because I know how much like time, it's a very selfless act. And it's like, you actually have to commit time and intentionality. And I think there are some areas in my like time management and organization where I'm like, if I brought someone in as a mentee, I could let them down. And I actually don't want to do that. So I think it's better to not blur those lines of like oh I'll mentor you and then it's been too much you haven't heard from me Um, and I think one thing you're great at is being very proactive like you don't just rely on your mentees or me to just be like oh Claude I need you can it's more like a hey Courtney checking in how are you Um, and I think that that just takes a level of organization that I haven't got to yet so I wouldn't want to let anybody down with that Um, but I do make myself open to giving people advice and like with the podcast and stuff like that like just putting things out there that can help people more generally so that's where I'm at yeah um I'm in a similar place in that I don't have any formalized mentees but there's just younger people that I will catch up with and like give advice or just check in see how their new job is going or whatever so it's it hasn't been in any like formal capacity but I think um someone else asked a question about um how how do you know that you're in a position to like mentor Mm -hmm. a person and I think we overcomplicate things Mm -hmm. (laughs) like I think we all walk around and have experiences which means we all know something um and even if you're not there yet um and i'm certainly not there yet i definitely have found that people like little things that i might have done that didn't really mean anything to me for example like bringing someone on set or like something like that that is like 
I'm there and you're willing to help and thank you <laughs> for coming. Um, like I've like the feedback has been like super like um, they've been super grateful for it. And it's like if I if you've got if you're anywhere um like yeah wherever you are in life basically and like whatever your experiences are I feel like there's value that you have that you can share and like part of it being part of being a mentor is just being a nice person Mm. um and so yeah yeah how about you how did you know you were ready to be a mentor oh I don't think people really gave me the choice (laughs) (laughs) it's like no like I need you to mentor (laughs) I think in terms of becoming a good mentor to people the difference between when I tried it when I was like younger versus now is not even just the experience because I feel like I've been able to give a level of insight to people for quite a long time is actually having the support around me Mm -hmm. so as you both know when it comes to organizing our mentorship meetings I'm not involved Mm -hmm. so obviously you talk to Shanna my PA and that's where it happens yeah obviously everyone you don't know Shanna is literally the reason why I'm alive at this point (laughs) in life um absolutely she is so it's that having her organize things like just the practicalities of like where when are we going to meet like mm-hmm. setting up the zoom link like making sure everything's in, t- in working from that angle or if i've got to change my schedule last minute or you're not able to make it whatever it might be i think that's what allowed me to become a an effective mentor because then i'm always like relatively available to you yeah. And it means that I can just focus on the logistics, not the logistics, but focus on the practicality of supporting you rather than the logistics of supporting you. Mm, so that was the, the change for me. Um, and that's just because like organization is on admin is not my natural gift. That's what I need to do. Yeah. So Courtney, yeah. Steph, thank you both for being on the podcast today. Um, you're definitely back on the future because now I think people are used to seeing myself, used to seeing Abby Soye. I do want to switch up and bring a lot more of the team on in the future so they can actually see what's happening behind the dreams. Um, <laughs> see I re- what you did there. <laughs> and Abby Soye is laughing at my cheesiness to the side as well. <laughs> but before then, um, where can people find out more about you online? Um, people can find me on Instagram. Mm-hmm. At Stephanie dot Dimmer. <laughs> You're such an ass. <laughs> I, <am. laughs> I actually I don't know when I became a hundred, but um, I can't seem to undo it. Um, yeah, you can find me on Instagram, and yeah, that's just about it, really. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, me? Uh, you can also follow me on the Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> At Cindy Boate. You can also follow uh, my digital sisterhood community at To My Sisterhood. Um, and you can catch me hosting your film premiere. <laughs> yes, you can, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's in January. So get tickets, guys. Yes. <laughs> what, so what's the film called? The film is called Leap. It's a documentary that I made with my friend Adesi. Um, shout out Adesi. And yeah, um, you, you can get that, also catch it online if you can't um, come to the premiere. Yeah, it's going to be amazing and low key what, what's Dream Nation's role in it as well do you want to oh, associate wanna... producer ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I think it sounds very yes. collaborative <laughs> <laughs> nepotism nepotism <laughs> at work <laughs> <laughs> but thank you guys and uh, see you all really soon and I did just also want to say thank you I was looking for a camera <laughs> thank you to everybody that did send in the questions let's thank you especially to the team my sisters community yes. you guys are oh, awesome they show up and sooner or later you will be seeing me on the podcast yes wow yes. <laughs> wow <laughs> for, sure, for sure for sure yeah, yeah. for sure for sure <laughs> great see ya Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. We release a new episode every Sunday, so make sure that you subscribe and follow us so that you never miss out. If you'd like some more inspiration while you wait for the next new episode, then check out the recommendation above. Don't forget to follow us on social media and you can send us a question or dilemma that you'd like us to answer on the podcast. This is Claude Williams, you've been watching Behind the Dreams and we look forward to seeing you at the next Dream Nation event.